Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked. and Today I'm going to be talking about a new application I recently came across called DSLR Controller. Now what this app allows you to do is control your DSLR via the actual tablet. So you actually have touchscreen functionalities to control your shutter speed, ISO, and a handful of other really cool features that I'm going to go over in depth here in a minute. So one thing you need is a DSLR camera, a USB OTG to to USB 2.0 adapter. These are about a dollar on Amazon. There'll be a link down below. And then you're going to need a USB, uh, regular USB to mini USB cable. Now I would, when it comes to the USB cables, you want to get a higher end one. It's usually a good sign if it's a good USB cable, if it has a breaker right here. Um, when you, if you see that in a picture on Amazon or whatnot, those are usually the good USB cables to get. Now this program is a little faulty. I'm going to dive into that a little bit more in depth um, here in a minute. But it does, it does take a high speed USB cord and one that's made well. If it isn't, then it will not work half the time. As well with these, these are kind of hit and miss. I ordered about 10 of these and only about four or five of them worked. So you probably want to order ones from within the US. I ordered uh, five or six of them from, the, from China. And the one I did order from California, um, again, I'll put a link down below for that, uh, did work really well. As well, this was about $5 for this 10-foot USB cord, which is very reasonable in my opinion. Um, and there'll be a link down below for that. So the really cool thing is that this application will hook into my 5D Mark II or my T2i or T3i or my T2i, which is what I'm shooting on. And it will actually give you actual functions. So you'll be able to control the actual camera from 10 feet away as long as the USB cord can reach. Um, via the actual touch screen of the Android tablet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get an in close up, in close shot of this and we're actually going to go over some of the functions and show you how to set everything up. Guys, so we're now going to hook up a DSLR camera to the Nexus 7 or my Android tablet with the DSLR app already installed on it. One of the nice things about the Nexus 7, which I'm sure other Android tablets do this, is that when my Android tablet is turned on and my 5D Mark II, which is the DSLR camera we'll be using, is set up in the correct in the correct functions. It will automatically connect to the software, um, the DSLR uh, controller app. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on and turn on the 5D Mark II, and we're going to put it into video mode. We're going to turn the tablet on, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to hook the Mark II to the tablet. Now sometimes, like I said, the, the connection can kind of be a little faulty, which is kind of frustrating. So you might have to play around with it for a second, or if you have a bad USB cord, it's not gonna connect at all. Um, as you noticed, it automatically connected. Now one of the things I don't like about the uh, 5D Mark II in this application is that it does not allow you to see your LCD screen at all, um, where you, you can see it here, on the tablet, but you don't have it as well connected to the 5D Mark II, where if I had the T3i, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, um, the T3i allows me to see the, the viewfinder, viewfinder mode, as well as the tablet mode at the same time. So we're going to go on and take the cap, lens cap off, and so we're just going to kind of walk through a little bit about the actual application. Now, like I was saying, one of the really nice things about this application is that it allows me to have full control of my camera and it's all from touch screen. So I can go in and I can change my shutter speed, make it really dark, that's a little high, so let's bring our shutter speed down to 60. I can control my f-stop, let's bring my f-stop down to a 7.1. I can control my ISO. We could bring my ISO up if I wanted to, 2500. Um, you have full control of this down here. This is how many pictures you can take. This is your record button and your picture taking button. So if I want to capture a picture, it's going to capture it and it's going to pull up this and let me view it. So I can actually view the picture from the actual camera that I just took. It's going to take a second to decode it. There it is. You have some information about it. We're going to go back. Um, over here you have your white balance. Uh, you have your modes here. You have your picture style. Uh, you have your different auto focusing modes. You have, this is set to autofocus right now. Um, so therefore, if I do this, now I do not think it, this works very well as your autofocusing functions with the touch screen here. I don't think it's all that great. 
but I can go in and hold down a section and it should automatically focus, but it is not doing that for some reason. Um, and then, well, we'll go back. There we go. So now it's going to try to automatically focus where I tell it to. Um, and it just, it really, in my opinion, does not work that well. Again, um, if you guys saw the jib footage that I shot when I was doing a review of the DVC 200 Pro Am 8 foot travel jib, I'm going to add a link to that right now. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of footage where I was forced to have my camera um, away from my hands where I had to control it from the actual tablet because the camera was sitting on a jib and I could not reach the focusing. So that's where the autofocus would really come into handy and that's where you would use it because that's the only option you have to get your focus um, where you need it to be when you can't be around your camera to manually focus. Um, so you have this too, so this you could use this to help autofocus. Um, so it's gonna try to focus in on that jar and you can see it just doesn't work that well. Um, if you hold it down and it's trying to focus and you just notice it just doesn't pull focus very well at all. So I'm not very happy with that at all, but I can live without that you know, working perfectly. You can turn your histograms on here so you can see your, your colors and see how, how they're set up. Um, you have different overlays. So if I wanted to do a, uh, I think it's a set to 16 by now, nine at the moment. Another thing is if you have Magic Lantern and you're using a Canon DSLR, this does work with other DSLRs besides Canon. But if you're using a Canon DSLR, then um, you don't have the functions of Magic Lantern that you do when it's not connected. So that's something else I've noticed. You don't, you can't, you can't run with Magic Lantern. So let's go into the settings. You have some pretty cool settings. Um, so you have uh, image view, image review. Oh, let's go back. And again, this this software can be a little faulty. It could just freeze up on me. It has just frozen up on me randomly before. So you can set up HDR. Uh, time bulb shots. Um, so some people may not have a bulb timer through their actual DSLR camera. Um, if, it, if it's one of the models that works with this software, then you might have that option now where you can actually do bulb shots, which is really nice. So this does work on the video settings and photography settings. So any people that do photography, um, these, this does work on both um, sides. Um, you have focus bracketing, you have time lapse, you have uh, brammer, bramper, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. I'll just probably go in and mess around with it. You have full screen live view, Wi-Fi pass-through mode. So one of the cool things about this is um, you can actually have this information sent to another Android tablet that is wirelessly, uh, wirelessly away from this tablet. So you could be sitting uh, in the director's chair watching everything that's being shot straight to your tablet while it's being shot even though you don't have an actual cord connected to the device or the other tablet. So that is a really cool option if you've got uh, if you've got an Android tablet that is compatible with the software you now can see what's going on Wi-Fi. Now I do not know if you can control the camera Wi-Fi um, but I do know that you can at least get the video video mode back through so you may also be able to control the camera Wi-Fi as well. Have not tested that because I do not have a second Android tablet. Uh, this is uh, just basic camera information, which is kind of cool. So it just goes in and tells you a little bit about your camera, uh, your shutter count. This one is almost up to 50,000 uh, shutter counts. So back in settings here. Uh, sync time, configuration. You can go in, pick you know, raw, uh, JPEG, different, different things like that, what you're wanting to do. This does give you some functions that even the Mark II doesn't give you, which is kind of cool. Uh, video format and quality silent shooting, strobe recharge delay, focus pull step delay. I mean, you just have, there's so many more, there's so many functions. Uh, so configurations for live view, your render quality. Uh, this, is, this is all for the live view of the actual software. So here we could live view it at a little bit faster at like 30 frames per second, but I just have 15 because that's all I really need. This is, the nice thing about the Nexus 7 is it's probably faster to do the 30 frames per second and be able to handle it pretty comfortably. Uh, mirroring, configurations, configurations for review, uh, configurations for storage. So you can set up your storage. You can have the information stored right onto your tablet as well. So you kind of have it on the go if you wanted. Uh, then you have controls. Um, so as you can see, all your camera functions are going to be all of these right through here under options. And then you have different, some different options for the actual software itself or the application. 
And uh, all in all, I think it is a really, really amazing uh, piece of software. It's $7.99 in the App Store, and uh, all you need is an Android tablet and a DSLR camera, and you can control it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch cameras. We're gonna put on the T3i, and so you guys can actually see where you get the live view from the application, the DSLR controller, and you're still getting your live view from the actual camera, which the 5D Mark II does not allow you to have. So uh, let's switch over to the other camera. So now I'm going to hook up the Canon T3i, which gives you a few extra functions and allows you to do things that the 5D Mark II could not do with the DSLR controller application. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go on and hook up the T3i, make sure it is turned on and in video mode first which it is, and it should automatically open up. And, well, we'll try it again. And it's not wanting to, so let's disconnect here, and there we go. So sometimes, like I said, you have to mess around with your cord to get it working. Um, it is a little faulty. Let's see how the focusing See if I can focus back here and focusing just, this is the biggest problem that I have with this uh, application is its ability to focus on something. But then again, being able to even think about focusing, on, focusing off the camera is pretty nice. So uh, if you notice, you actually get the live view mode here on the actual tablet as well. I'm getting live view mode here on the camera. So you can still see your magic lantern functions and settings through the live view mode on your camera, but they do not show up on your actual tablet. So if we wanna go on and record some video here, we're just gonna push the record button. And I guess you still get some magic lantern options do pop up, which is kinda of nice. If you guys just noticed that, that was the magic zoom. Um, and now it's automatically stopped recording for some reason. So let's try to record again. And it seems to be recording just fine now. I don't know why it stopped recording a second ago. Um, and we'll stop recording here. So, and we can take pictures. Um, and you pretty much see that most of the information is the same. Um, a few items, like uh, you don't have this option here, and the uh, white balance looks a little bit different when you got the 5D Mark II plugged in. So all in all, uh, if you already have an Android tablet sitting around, it's worth the $8 for sure to go on and pick up DSLR controller. Um, if you don't have an Android tablet, I actually bought an Android tablet, the Nexus 7, for the simple, for the, for the only reason was to be able to do this. Um, for me, it was worth the, I think, $150 I spent on the Nexus 7 and the $8 that I spent on the DSLR controller. And then, of course, I paid $5 for this cord, uh, the USB cord and the toggle cord to toggle between the tablet and the uh, camera. Again, I spent a dollar for that. So all in all, for me, it was worth it. It was worth the $165 I spent to have an external monitor that can be hands-free um, and I can pretty much control my camera to the T um, with the touchscreen system on the Android tablet. Plus, on top of that, I also have a tablet that I can use for non-camera related issues or if I wanted to get a portfolio program, whatever. So the tablet has a lot of functions that if you went out and bought a HD uh, LCD seven inch screen for your uh, camera, it doesn't have the options of touch screen and it actually being a tablet, which has many other functions. Like I like to play Pokemon emulators when I'm at work sometimes, it passes the time. So it's nice to have. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful day and uh, Check out DSLR Controller. There'll be links down below for all that information as well. Check us out on Facebook at David D. Images and Twitter at Media Unlocked. And we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one.